So here we are in part three looking at the handbook novice transmitter and I've put, some, put a few labels on there just to dress it out a little bit as we finish up this uh, three-part series on the uh, beginner's transmitter that many of us built. Um, this was in the handbook between uh, probably 1956 and 1964. Um, tried and true circuit I can say after playing with the transmitter over several weeks that uh, without modification, if used correctly and with good crystals, this thing needed no modifications and was an excellent design right out of the box. No modifications, no updates, no real corrections. It's a very good circuit and a reliable circuit. I've had a ton of comments coming in and uh, suggestions on how we might be able to use these little HC49 crystals, especially on 40 meters, uh, where the crystals get quite thin uh, in a transmitter like this. So there's a lot of interest in how we could possibly make these little crystals work, as well as the full-size FT243s. So we'll be studying that in this video. Also, uh, there was interest in how to actually mount the HC49Us into an ordinary crystal holder. So I'll go through that process as well. So here we are in part three of the Handbook Novice Transmitter. Okay, let's try to call CQ on 40 meters. I'm using this super high class receiver, the little Heathkit AR3. Let's listen and see if anybody's on our frequency. I'm at 7050. W1AW is transmitting code practice. He's very strong. Twenty words per minute he's sending now. Let's go a little further away from him. So there you go. V 
VE9 calling. Ha, somebody that's watching the YouTube channel, VE9MLG. So uh, before we try a few techniques for adapting the small HC49U crystals to work properly in this old circuit, we must first figure out how to estimate the drive power into the crystal. Presently, we have uh, C1. It's an adjustable trimmer, and that's how we can adjust our drive power. Basically, as you compress the trimmer, um, more capacitance means more drive. But that's the only adjustment we have in getting current into the crystal. The values uh, shown are 1, C2, C1, and even the uh, radio frequency choke. This is all very typical for this era. So we could put a resistor in series with the crystal and attempt to measure um, the voltage across that resistor to get a current measurement. We need some type of differential probe or really good scope to do that measurement. Instead, I decided to try to use a current transformer at this point, like uh, slipping a bead over the crystal lead. And uh, I thought I could do this using a Type 43 toroid. Um, I needed to have a little bit of validation and help, so I called on my friend Wes Hayward, W7ZOI, to try to help us on this current measurement business for this video. And uh, I'm going to quote Wes on this. Um, he says, uh, the basis for the measurement, as you've already noted, is a ferrite transformer. I chose a junk box bead, the FB432401. It's very much like the familiar FT3743 toroid. They're both about the same diameter, use the same type 43 material. The bead has just a bit more material, but either should work fine. Uh, here's my, uh, my basic transformer schematic. Uh, the Z looking into that one turn is going to be low, about half an ohm. And uh, this only happens if you're terminating in 50 ohms. This is vital. The 10 turn winding should always be terminated in 50 ohms. So another figure is the photo showing the transformer I wound. I wound 10 turns of number 28 onto the core and then I put it over a single wire between two B and C connectors. This was to become part of the test fixture to confirm the behavior. The whole thing resides on a scrap of PC board material. I used about a 5 inch or so piece of small coax between the 10 turns and a connector that was at the far end. A cable tie kept the thing in place so it didn't break as it did on my first version. This produced a current that's diminished by a factor of 10 in the 10 turn winding. So basically he's terminating the other side of the coax into a, an oscilloscope and he's converting the peak-to-peak -peak of the oscilloscope to RMS uh, for his measurements. I basically uh, took this circuit and substituted for the scope an RMS voltmeter that I know has a frequency range up to 15 megahertz. And then I validated uh, the 10 to 1 current reduction from about 3 megahertz up to 14 megahertz. And it produced a very repeatable 10 to 1 current measurement. 
This may seem reverse to you uh, because we have one turns on the primary and 10 turns on the secondary. But remember, this is a current transformer, not a voltage transformer. So it produces a current that's diminished by a factor of 10 in the 10 turn winding as long as it's uh, well terminated. So uh, Wes validated that arrangement. And, uh, you know, this is all going to depend on us understanding the uh, series resistance of the crystal. And this varies over frequency. They usually have uh, a maximum and then they have a typical number. But I'm telling you, here at uh, 7 megahertz where we are, sorry, it's not as bad as 15 ohms. Wes was getting a resistance of around 6 ohms. Uh, in his uh, measurements. So let's uh, let's do a, a practical uh, calculation. Okay, so we have our current transformer hooked up. We're keying our transmitter and uh, we start to read something on our RMS voltmeter. Let's say we have 200 millivolts RMS at the scope or at, in our case at the RMS voltmeter. Using Ohm's law E over R is 4 milliamps. So let's go there. And E squared over R is 8 milliwatts. That's the amount of power we're measuring out at the RMS voltmeter into our 50 ohm load. So if we multiply by 10, we get 40 milliamps of crystal current. That seems like quite a bit of current, but I guess for an FT243, that might be in line with what we would have normally. So let's say this crystal is a very high Q HC49 crystal and it has an ESR of 10. I squared R uh, would be the 40 milliamps squared times 10 or 80 milliwatts into that little HC49 crystal. I think things are going to get a little bit warm and maybe things are not going to work right. Okay, so I have a pickup that is on the uh, crystal lead going right into the oscillator tube. And this pickup is a 10 to 1 current transformer. The current transformer is coming down this coax and it's going right into my RMS voltmeter that is good to about 15 megahertz. So here at 7 megahertz it should be fairly accurate. I have a 50 ohm load right at the RMS voltmeter. I could do this with the scope um, as well, but I'm going to use the RMS voltmeter so I don't have to convert any terms. It should work pretty well. So here on 40 meters, I'm putting out the full power and uh, I've got a crystal current, uh, let's call it 275 millivolts RMS, something in that neighborhood. Now with 275 millivolts RMS, um, that means that the current in this load right here is 5.5 milliamps using Ohm's law. And the current into the crystal okay, down here will be 10 times higher than that because it's a, a, a 10 to 1 type system. So the current into the crystal is 55 milliamps. If we consider that the crystal has an ESR of, let's just call it 10 ohms. It could be better, it could be worse, but let's just call it 10 ohms. Then uh, I squared R would be 55 milliamps squared times 10, or 30.2 milliwatts into the crystal. So that's the basic setup. Now that, that's a lot higher than we would like to put into an HC49 crystal. But it's probably very acceptable for an FT243. That's, uh, that's not going not to hurt an FT243 crystal. By the way, just by dumb luck, the first crystal that I opened up in my junk box collection of bad crystals 
which apparently used to be 7016 kilohertz, looks like it's been ground a little bit, is cracked. And you can easily see what the crack looks like on the crystal blank. This is what happens when crystals go bad. And we have this nice uh, shattered crystal blank. Okay, So I hope you guys can see that because this is really what we've been talking about. This is what happens when the crystal vibrates so violently that uh, the crystal lattice actually breaks. Okay, I can report that I have the first crystal installed in the FT243 holder. And uh, I had a regular FT243 tuned up. I've just stuck it in here. Uh, this one's at uh, 7285, 7286. What's it mark? 7285, yeah. Very unhappy, very unhappy crystal. Uh, this guy does not like that current at all. Um, as expected, these small crystals are not doing well with a, uh, with a high current situation like we have here. And we're going to have to do something to try to improve because this would, uh, if it hasn't already destroyed the crystal, it would destroy the crystal in short order. Of course, we have terrible heating. I can actually feel the crystal getting warm. So we have uh, only one adjustment available, and that is the trimmer that's on the grid of the oscillator. Uh, this was given to the novice in the article and you were told to adjust this for the best performance with the crystal you're using. Uh, essentially this can control the feedback into the crystal. We have our pickup here so when we press the key you can see we've got 500 millivolts RMS and we are putting out the full amount of power on the meter which around 15 watts here on 40 meters and it is dipped so if I adjust this tremor okay have to be careful as I'm closing the tremor the crystal current goes up as I'm opening the tremor the drive is going down. So until I have it all the way up, I've been able to lower the current a little bit, but I'm out of range now. The trimmer will literally come apart. Okay, so the next thing that I'm trying is simply to double the value of the capacitor uh, from the choke to ground. That currently is a 100 picofarad capacitor, and I've just doubled it to 200 picofarads. And let's see how the uh, the trimmer acts here. Okay, already it's lower. You can see that the the crystal current has gone down from almost uh, you know up up this way. We've cut it almost in half just by increasing that cap value. And again, as we increase the trimmer, we get more drive back. So it's kind of a uh, wide adjustment type circuit. Uh, whether that capacitor is 100 puff or 200 puff, the trimmer has enough range to, uh, to adjust the feedback for this crystal with no problem. Now, did it reduce the crystal current? Probably a little bit. Um, it cut it down, but it's still way too high. So we need to find another way to limit the drive to the crystal. Uh, it looks like just doing it with the capacitance ratio between the cathode capacitor and the grid capacitor uh, is not the way we're going to get there with this particular coal pits topology. So now I know what people are going to say. Mike, you're going to mess with this perfectly good transmitter. You're going to start modifying it. 
Well, in order to study this uh, crystal problem, this crystal current issue, uh, I'm going to try a few things that I've learned from some of the guys uh, in the comments that have experience. And uh, one of the suggestions was that you need to lower the voltage on the screen of the oscillator. And uh, people have had success all the way down to 50 volts even on the screen. Now I'm not going to go that far. I'm simply going to replace the OD3 VR150, the 150 volt regulator tube, with a 75 volt tube. This is uh, VR75 or OB3 I think it is. And uh, this particular tube will light orange because the gas they use inside is neon. And uh, if we're going from, say, 400 volts down to 75 volts, we would have to increase the value of the series resistor in order to keep the current within about 30 to 35 milliamps going into lighting this VR tube and uh, that the oscillator would be using. So um, I've added a 2000 ohm resistor. So instead of being a 10K series resistor to the screen, now we're talking about a 12K. I might be able to get away with as high as a 15K 10-watt uh, resistor there, but this is just playing, just to see if we can get this thing to light up, and we can see if the thing will oscillate with 75 volts on the screen instead of 150 First volts. of all, people want to see it lit up, and you can see it is lit up orange. I think it's a little bit bright, so I think uh, maybe... Uh, the 15k guess that I had uh, was probably a little bit closer. But I don't think this is going to hurt the tube. We'll try it with 12k to start with. Okay, I haven't changed anything but the tube. So we now have 75 volts on the screen instead of 150. Okay, let's see if I can dip the plate. Well, I can tell you right off the bat, the current is lower, and the output power is cut in half, around 6 or 7 watts out. It's cut the power in half, the output power. Remember, the screen of the 6DQ6 is acting as the plate of the oscillator. So, uh, we've definitely cut down on the drive pretty drastically. Uh, for the electron coupled part of the tube and our power has gone down however the the note still sounds good let's see if changing the trimmer does anything oh I forgot to turn on the crystal current monitor this is what we're trying to measure and I forgot to turn it on ridiculous okay Okay, we now have the 75 volt regulator tube on the screen. I've removed the 100 picofarad capacitor, so we're back where we started. Let's take a look. Yep, the current's quite low on the crystal, we can see that. But so is the power. And the and the current in the final is down to around 30 milliamps instead of 60. It's definitely cut the current down. The power output, let's take a look at that. Cut in half, six or seven watts is all we're getting. So we've cut the power in half by going to 75 vol volts. So I would say that, uh, yes, this definitely lowered the crystal current. There's no doubt about it. 
but it also lowered the power output. So perhaps splitting the middle with a VR105 for a 105 volt regulation might be one technique for improving the crystal current situation. But I don't think people are interested in cutting their power in half. You know, I, I don't think that's really what people are interested in. So, um, I don't think this was a good way to um, make the transmitter work with the older crystals, but I think it's a good technique if you had to use the, the newer crystals. But the price you're going to pay is instead of 15 watts out on 40, you would only get half the power. So we can actually try one of those um, smaller crystals with this technique before we abandon it. And so this is a 3.686 crystal HC49 that I've got inside this holder. It is surviving with this uh, with this amount of crystal current. However, the power output on 80 meters is very low. It's only about 3 or 4 watts. So with the 75 volt screen voltage, it seems to be a little easier on the HC49 crystals. And the tone's not bad. It's a little bit soft. I adjusted the trimmer for the best note. That's certainly usable for a QRP type situation where you only need a few watts. Okay, okay, some of you are going to be a little upset. Uh, I've run out of time again in this video and we've only covered two of the techniques for reducing the crystal current so that we can use these small HC49 crystals. So there will be one more video. We'll not only go through the uh, two remaining methods, but we'll also go through how to uh, mount the HC49 in the FT243 packages. Stand by for part four.